Here's the part in CAD. It's called a ramshaft. We're going to be doing the right hand end of the part as you see in that picture. These are the blanks of material. They're um, 4140 commercial heat treated pieces of material to uh, the customer's specification. As you can see the diameter is seven and a quarter inches. And I think the blanks are roughly about 21 inches long. They vary a little bit in length. So we're going to have to prepare the blanks by facing one end and center drilling it. I could do this all in, in the same operation, but I'd have to move the tail stock and the steady rest back and forth, and it's kind of a pain to do that, and, and I only can grab onto about the last three quarters of an inch of the stock, and I don't really want to do that and have to face the end of the part. It's not enough to be held in the chuck jaws. The part might come out of the chuck, so I put it in these hard jaws with serrations on it. But the um, if I tried to do it in one operation, I'd have to skim the OD, close the steady rest on it, and then face it and center drill it. And then uh, I'd have to move the steady rest up. And it, it's a lot, it's pretty involved, and so I thought it'd be just easier just to um, actually face every part and center drill it just to get started and that way I have a good face and I'll, because I can't face it obviously because the tailstock center is going to be in the way if I have you know between the centers so that's what I did to all of the there's 11 blanks of material to get up to this point so this first part of the video is just facing the ends and center drilling all the pieces of material here. So here's all the blanks after they've been all prepared on the ends, faced and center drilled, ready for the actual machining operation, I guess you might say, of, of turning the end of the part as you saw in the CAD model earlier. But first I have to make some soft jaws to hold the part. So this part of the video is, is um, milling those soft jaws in order to hold the part on this first operation. So I have to mill a counterbore for the seven and a quarter inch diameter, which is what this, uh, roughing it out here with the feed mill. And then uh, I have to mill between the jaws because the I can't close them far enough to get the second operation of the part. I'm gonna turn it around and, and use the idea of these same jaws to chuck onto it to do the milling operation which is going to be the, what the next video is going to be about but in order to close the jaws far enough I got to mill the corners off the jaws so right now here it's just roughing out this counter bore it's easier to rough this with a milling cutter than to do it with a boring bar you could do it with a boring bar but it it um it's an intermittent cut and it's kind of hard on the insert so you can rough it easier actually with a milling cutter like I'm doing here with this uh, um, rotating the c-axis to do the milling so that's what this tool does then we come back with the um, I think it's an inch and a half feed mill just to knock the corners off the, there's nothing precise about this it just has to be uh, clearance for the jaws so that I can close them a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing here. And I sped this up in sections so we wouldn't have to watch this go all the way down. It's going about four inches down. These jaws are about four and three quarters inches tall. 
so I put a counterbore three quarters of an inch deep to hold the end of the stock and then I relieved these corners off the jaws here just to, like I said, so they could close further and I, I bored the um, ID of the uh, jaws after I did all this I, I had a piece of pipe, I found a scrap piece of pipe laying around here in the shop and I clamped the jaws on the counter bore You'll see that later, although I didn't take any video of actually boring the ID. It has to be bored to three and a half inches for the the um, shaft part of this ram shaft piece. When I turn it around for the milling, here I'm just milling with the feed mill down, like I said, to knock the corners off of the jaws. And I kind of jump through this quick. It really didn't take very long, but I was trying to keep this video, I was trying to keep it under 30 minutes long. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not, just to show this first operation, the total setup and everything. So that's the first two notches, then rotate around and do the other two here. Then come back with a um, boring bar and bore the... ID that holds a seven and a quarter inch diameter, three quarters of an inch deep. And then, like I said, I put I got this piece of pipe and clamped it in that counter bore so that um, it's important when you bore jaws that you put the same force that uh, you do when you actually clamp the part in there because there's a, there's a certain amount of play in the master jaws of any chuck and the jaws will flex outward so if you just bore the jaws without any kind of force on a uh, clamping force on the chuck jaws then when you clamp on the part you're actually going to only be holding on the very close to the chuck and the out, outer end of the jaws will spring away from the part and, and you could have a either an unsafe condition or a vibration because you're only hold, making a point contact with the jaws so if you put a ring or a spacer or something that's why I have the spacer in the middle of the jaws right now and I'm boring this counter bore to hold the the um, part for the first operation but then here there's gonna be a picture showing a piece of pipe I clamped in the counter bore and then I manually board the jaws here I'm just putting a relief in the corner because uh, the parts are just saw cut and they have a sharp edge and the insert had a radius from the boring bar previous to this. So I just want to get rid of that radius in the corner of, of each jaw. So, and I just manually did that. Now here's the picture of where I bored the ID of the jaws for the second operation. But I didn't unfortunately take any video of this. But there's a photos of it. And then I, I took the jaws off and I deburred them this little uh, pencil grinder thing that I have. That's the relief in the jaw, so the corners that I did with that boring bar in the previous segment. Just deburring the burrs off the jaws here. Sped this up, but I, I didn't think you'd want to watch me go through a bunch of deburring here in these jaws. In fact, I, uh, maybe I should have just cut this whole thing out of the video. I don't know if it, it, it looks kind of interesting, but. Okay, so there's the four jaws deburred. I gotta mount them back on the chuck. I actually did that before I uh, did the previous operation of preparing the stock because we were waiting on a job question if I could even center drill the ends of these parts because they didn't show it on the drawing. And, and man, we waited like a week for the answer to that question of if we could put a center drill in there. The, the part is gonna get 
I'm going to turn it to a diameter, then they're going to grind it undersized, and then they're going to get it nickel plated after they grind it. So even though they want me to leave a good finish on the on the turning, it didn't seem like it made sense because then they're going to grind it afterwards. But that's what the drawing calls for, so that's what we got to do. Uh, there's putting the jaws back on the chuck, getting ready for this. Um, now I'm, I'm going to roughly space the jaws so that I can get the part in there. When, when I have the part up on the crane, I don't want to be fiddling around with opening these jaws up. And so I get it roughly out to a seven and a quarter. You can use the rings on the chuck, the grooves in the face to kind of estimate that after you figure out which one to use. And they're going to move the steady rest forward here because we're going to have to have the tailstock forward. So here comes the tailstock. Get all this set there. It, it's, it's better if you don't have to move this tailstock once you get everything turning straight. It, it works a little bit better. I'm getting the first part and mounting it in the jaws. The chuck. Now if you remember, I don't know if you remember when I was facing the parts and then I um, in center drilling them, facing and center drilling them, I, I, I indicated up as close to the jaws as I could and I checked that with a tape measure and it was about five inches from the end of the part. So what I'm going to do here after I get it on the on the tailstock and get the chuck closed is I'm going to put the indicator, you'll see me measure it with a tape measure here in a second or so, and, and I'm going to try to indicate the parts more or less in the same place I indicated them when, um, when I faced the ends, because I didn't really worry about the, the right end of the part running out too much. I mean, it... it when I chucked it to face and center drill, I indicated about five inches up, it turned out, from the end of the part. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna indicate in the same place and get the part running more or less true right there at the five inches. And that should, theoretically, if that's running true and the center drill was put in when that was running true, it should make the face run out minimal. I mean it's not that critical in, in reality but I just wanted to try to reduce the error. So I'm checking the face here to make sure it's not running out too much. And it seems to be pretty good. I think it's within about a one or two thousandths down there. I can't get down at the diameter of the part actually is but it, this is bigger than the tip of the part's going to be so that's that's an acceptable amount of run out for this particular part. I'm going to um, set the part zero on this in the Z, which is a Hamer 3D indicator deal. I'm going to change to the first tool that's going to rough this OD out, and I want to check to make sure that I'm not going to actually run into the chuck jaws. So I jogged it down to the depth of, um, and also that I'm not going to hit the sheet metal of the machine up, up against the end of the cabinet there. I jogged it down to the maximum Z dimension that any of the tools are going to run, and uh, which that's a little bit greater than the maximum. I think it was 2.1, 21.1 I mean. And so it, everything seems like it's going to clear and this happens to be the shortest part of all of them too but uh, the the tool I'm going to do the finish cut with I thought it might have a clearance problem and so I was going to cut the corners off these jaws here you'll see in a second what I mean that that way I'd have a little extra clearance wouldn't have to be worrying about that tool hitting the ch chuck jaws because obviously that'd be a big disaster if you hit that chuck when it's rotating on a machine like this 
that, that spindle has 60 horsepower and it's just going to break stuff up if you hit it and it's it's better to check this very carefully before you get there so there's the tool I'm going to finish the OD with and um, I need that clearance see because it gets bigger in diameter up there on the shank it's it's going to be coming down an angle of about 30 degrees I think it's 30 degrees something like that when it's coming up the face so it'll actually clear that that um corner on the jaws when it's coming up the the middle of the part the the shaft part of the part I guess you might call it is three and a half inches in diameter and this tool is setting about seven and a quarter inches in diameter so it's gonna what, what I'm pointing at there with my finger is where it's it's gonna come up this angle and it's it was close but it cleared all right and uh, and of course this is the um, shortest part of all of them and so the the Z zero would be further out and would give me more clearance on the jaws on the subsequent parts so that's what I'm talking about and there's plenty of clearance on the OD so the jaws aren't going to hit the face of the spindle that's that's the deal with this kind of a machine you uh, have to keep that in mind that the smaller the diameter of the part the longer the tool has to be if you're close up to the chuck or you're going to be hitting the face of the spindle on the chuck if you have it in this orientation So here we go with the first tool to rough the OD down. Um, if I remember right, I think this uh, feed rate was, um, it was 650 surface footage at 14 thousandths per inch per revolution. Um, I think on the first part here, I forgot to put it in constant surface footage, actually in the in the cam software. So I had to kind of speed the spindle up as it went down. Uh, I had to make an edit to the program so the next parts I'll use constant surface footage so it'll speed up as it goes down the, the um, oh, you know down the diameter as it roughs down the part this shot the camera I tried this shot but the camera was kinda like getting all covered with coolant so I uh, stopped the machine back here and I put the camera in the, this location. It seemed to be a little bit better. Um, I've kind of finalized the, des the design on my um, aluminum case for my GoPro, but I haven't had time to make it. I need to make it because this one that I'm using right here has a big crack in the bottom of it and, and uh, I'm kind of concerned that I'm going to get coolant in the on the camera, but it seems to be doing all right. I've tried plastic bags, but with, when you're machining this steel, those shavings are coming off hot. And then putting a plastic bag around the GoPro um, case, it just melts through it. Because these, if the shavings hit it, it, it just melts right through that plastic. These, uh, these shavings, are, even though there's coolant spraying on there, they're hot. And I turned the high pressure coolant off and just running flood coolant through the spindle in these uh, shots so that I could get some video. When I do the real machining, I'm going to use high pressure coolant on these tools. It really improves the life of the inserts. I think I took four passes down the OD of this and then I kind of checked the, stopped it and checked the insert just to see what it was doing. And it looked pretty good, so I, I let it run and it easily roughed the whole part down with one tip on the insert without a problem. Here's where I think, no, I took one more pass. No, I stopped it right here. And I um, opened the doors and I rotated the tool back around. I don't know if you could see that here. The camera's kind of got a lot of coolant on it. Uh, I was tempted to grab those shavings off by hand, but don't do that. You're going to cut your fingers. can't tell you how many times I've cut myself doing that. You don't seem to learn. So rotate the tool around. You can kind of see it there. The video is kind of blurry. And uh, I checked the insert. I took a close-up picture of the insert here. You should see it. And it looked pretty good after roughing four times down that part. So I left it be and I continued roughing and it didn't have any problem. 
I think it'd even be better when I use constant surface footage. I, I couldn't get the um, and I think I had it in low range too. Might try high range so I can get a higher RPM down smaller diameter because the low range only goes to 480 RPM on this machine and when I get down to uh, the three and a half inches I need to go faster than that to keep a constant surface footage of 650 um, but it did alright I'll have to try it the other way it was pulling about 50 percent spindle load we're taking a uh, 200 thousandths radial depth of cut, so that's 400 thousandths off the diameter in each pass. And like I said, at 14 thousandths per inch feed, and would normally be 650 surface footage, but in low range it can't even get that high. Here's the finished roughed out part from the first tool. And then I, I for some reason, I was I lost the the video I took of roughing this thread relief. I don't know what happened. Here's the finish tool and I, I also lost some shots I had from the other direction on this tool. It's the only one I had. I don't know what I did. I deleted them or, or something. I, um, so this is the best shot I have of the finish tool right here. I, I ran it a couple times because I cut it large to begin with and then uh, brought it down to size because this is the first part. The, the OD here, that three and a half inches only has to be held within plus or minus five but they want a 32 finish on it. This material looks kind of funny when you machine it. It's You'll see in some pi pictures further on in the video that uh, it has this texture to it. Even though you have a good finish on it, it looks kind of weird. Like there's hard and soft spots in it or something. Here's the finish cut on the what I'm what I call the pin end of the part with the thread and the O-ring groove. That diameter up close to the shoulder has to be held within plus or minus one thousandths of an inch. There. And it, it's this machine you don't have too much trouble with that kind of tolerance. Here comes the what is this tool the. Uh, grooving tool, I believe, yeah. Grooving tool. Groove out the groove. Okay. And then the uh, um, threading tool. It didn't have the right insert in the threading tool. I had to change it. it. There was an Acme thread insert in there. I had to put a V thread insert into it. Here, if you can see that. And then retouch it off for the. Um, thread, touch the OD off, so when you're using a half inch pin here on the display on the Mazak, it, it should read an inch bigger in diameter than what that finished turn diameter is, so in this case it's three and a half inches plus an inch is four and a half inches in diameter, and this would be of course a half inch in front of the Z0, so you got to set the offsets accordingly for that. So that's it, and then run the thread here, and that completes. Oh, I stopped it just to check to make sure that it had the right pitch. Although yeah, I could look at the program for that, I guess too. So that's it. So here's the finished part in the lathe. The next video is going to be about doing the milling on the other end of the part. And if this is the first time you've seen any of my videos, please subscribe. And to all the others, thanks for watching.